Hello, welcome to the Divine Temple of the Holy Grail. We are not in our normal room today because it was just a harsh background, so I wanted something softer, more feminine, more, you know, light. Okay, so we're going to uh, uh, light the candle. Heavenly Father, Mother, God, bring your holy presence into this place. Bring in the light, the love, Christ Jesus, the Divine Holy Spirit in the Grail. All right, we're lighting this candle. <clears throat> it's a great, great day. It's, ah, okay, things are happening. Like all the energy and light coming in, it's crazy. But um, people are being affected. I had nausea. I was like walking around, like all of a sudden it, it would feel too like someone bat, bat my head and went, whoa. Like just throwing off balance, right? And then you can't do anything because you got to lie down and integrate everything that you're hearing and your body's absorbing that DNA frequency and it's like, oh, you have to surrender to it. Yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Um, I, I always try to be so in, like being in the now to the point where, um, you know, um, you're able to Go with what you see at any given moment. So you're wondering, what am I to do after I get my hair done? Um, well, I'm to go out for breakfast. So I go, how do I know I'm to go out for breakfast? And it was, well, all I could do in my mind, right, was see this restaurant that I always go to for breakfast. So I'm looking at, I'm following that because that's how you follow your guidance. This is how it looks, this is how it works. So I'm giving you gold here, okay? When you are uh, in the now, which we are now. So everyone's going, how do I live in the now? Sandra, how, how do I live in the now? Not just, that was, not just me, but they're asking everybody. They're asking the universe. So some people's answer will come through me and some people's answer will go through others. But being in the now means you're open to whatever happens at any given moment. So when you wake up every day, you put your feet on the floor and you're going, where am I going now? What's happening now? What's going to turn up? Who's going to call? Uh, you know, I might just out walking my dog and meet this person. We get, out, get along really great. He invites me back for a beer and they become friends. Like so much is happening in, in that way right now. And, um, being able to be in the now will connect you. It will guide you to where you're supposed to be, what neighborhood to look, to live in. Okay, I'll give you an example. This lady uh, was visiting our um, a dear friend of ours who has recently passed, and she, we were all invited over to a party, so I, I met the hostess's friend. And I just said, you know, how are things going? What's going on for you in your life? And she said, well, the strangest thing, we were here on uh, Christmas, and someone was looking through the real estate news um, and all of a sudden I saw this house and she said, I heard, you have to go buy that house. So she did. She followed her intuition. She, she moved her whole place up. She sold her house, moved to where she got the vision, moved to where she was told to go because her heart was, her knowings, just the fact that she said, I have to live here. She got the message right away. She didn't hesitate. She acted on it because she's moved into the awareness that when you make that action, you're going to have a better life. You're going to have a better life. It's going to work out better. Okay? Because uh, spirit never leads you wrong. Spirit is always, always right. It's always telling you, this is what you should do now. This is what you should do now. And that's what happens when you surrender. It's because you stop arguing with what you're hearing. You stop making excuses. Oh, do I have to go there? No, I don't. I'm not listening to you, guidance, because I have to go here. I have an appointment. I had this scheduled. You know, I got to go. So you're telling yourself not now. Not now. No, no, no. There's going to be time ahead for that. Not now. All right. So when you refuse to act in the now, the good that's coming to you could, you know, pass you by. Right. Because it's for the now. And if you don't act and you like the flavor of ice cream you're being fed in this now, you know, ah, I'm going to hold up for something better. <laughs> you're on a rocky road. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for that. I'm not going to have anything. 
So when you are saying no to the spirit, it's like you're going, the spirit's giving you an opportunity and it's passing you by and, and then you don't realize that you should go, hey, wait, wait a minute, maybe that, maybe I'll say yes now. Because you're getting the idea that it's just gonna be harder, you'll be stuck where you are longer, because now the universe, because you said no, you weren't listening to your higher self, now the universe has gotta go back and go, oh, that was their like gateway, their portal, and they, they missed it. They didn't take the opportunity and the guidance we were giving. So now what do we do? Well, we gotta formulate a new plan, we got to go back to square one. We got to decide, okay, they pass that up, up that opportunity. Now, you know what? It's going to be a while before it comes back again. So who knows how long in line you are for a rewrite is what I'm saying to you. You might not get another rewrite ever. Like they just might go ungrateful bastard and throw your file away. Or they just might say, oh, no, he's so close. He's worked so hard. Okay, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to have Spirit present uh, another opportunity. If you're lucky, it'll come right away, but you could have to wait for a while. So it's because the universe has to align itself. Okay, this is, why, this is why stealing is a really bad idea, all right? If you're at someone's house, you must understand spiritually everything in the room is there for a reason. Everything has been placed in that room where you are now, from all your past, from all your future, and from the present. Every answer has been placed in this room for you to eventually wake up to it. It might take you uh, uh, five years to realize, oh, hey, this book's been sitting here for a while. Um, you know, maybe I should read it. it. It's like it's waiting there for you to get the message you're meant to get in the future. If somebody comes in and says, hey, I really like this book, and someone's left the room, and they take the book, like, right? right? Or it's a pair of slippers, or it could be money, or it could be makeup. If you take anything out of someone's home, what you're doing is you're actually disrupting the whole universe. And now the universe has to totally realign because you took that one thing that was in the room, you stole it, you took that one thing away so the person who was meant to get the message at the time in the future didn't get their message and then we get into trouble as a race. Do you understand? It, once you have the sacredness, the sacred understanding that everything is sacred, like, and you don't realize it, but I can go, okay, this book is sacred. I know it's sacred because it's giving me guidance. It's giving me information. It's giving me clues from God like no other book has ever given me. It's the grail. All right, and so I'm finding out about myself and my journey and who's in it and what's going to happen in our history. This is this absolutely unbelievably great. Okay, so I just want to tie, tie up with stealing is a no-no. All right, don't remove anything from any place that you find in any room without permission or without really asking the question, am I supposed to take this? Is this mine? Was it here for me to find as a clue for me? Or is it my leave it here for a clue for somebody else? That's consciousness. That is high, high, high consciousness when you can walk into a room and not disturb it and respect in your mind. I'm walking and everything that I'm seeing, I might judge as, oh, that shouldn't be there. They should put that away. They should do that. Everything I'm seeing in the scene I'm in has a message. It might be from the past for me, or it might be in the future for someone else. So don't disturb the scene. Can you imagine walking daily in the, in the heavenly realms where you have that level of awareness that everything matters? And now that becomes sacred. And now that becomes divine. Living in heaven is respecting the rules laid out by heaven, which is in heaven, everything's divine. So don't mess around with it. Don't argue with it. Oh, okay. Um, yes. All right. So now I'm going to, uh, I'm getting a drink of water. Oh, no, it's, just, it's just behind me here. Hope you, can, hope you can see me here. Sorry, I've left camera on far away here. Yeah, probably am far away, but it's just absolutely amazing to me that this is coming through me today. 
This is coming through me today, and I'll tell you why it's so significant. It's because Alex Collier's live on his webinar, and I'm live in the moment at the same time. This is the first time, this is a historic day, an historic day because actually the twin flames, the morning star and the night star, have actually come together today because we're broadcasting at the same time. So you're getting a double whammy of, of mother, father, God energies out there right now. So I try and understand that, okay? Um, all these blasts of energies that are coming in from other planets are waking us up to the point where as a collective, we needed the Christ to appear. We need the Magdalene, the Grail to appear on the same day on the airwaves. Do you understand that? We're in the ethers. We're making our appearance in the airways, which is you have access to through these videos. So I had no idea that this was such a historic day, probably why the universe got me uh, you know, dressed up to make the video. Yes, it's like I'm at the Academy Awards. I'm at the, uh, you know, right down to the fancy shoes. I'm like, you know, this is an historic day, but I'm receiving right now on camera the uh, significance of what's important today. It's the joining together of the airwaves of Mother, Father, God, all right? Now, I'm going to speak to the other half and offer a little more um, food for thought, a, f a little bit more for your, I'm gonna feed your higher consciousness here, but you're busy at work right now, so <laughs> uh, this'll be for later. You'll watch this later and you'll go, oh, thanks for recording it. Now I've got this great information. Right, okay. All right, so this is some more clues for our Galahad, our uh, uh, you know, quest for the Holy Grail. So my books, and basically what I've been writing about for 30 years is trying to prove the theory that past uh, big people, past um, entities, energies, have always existed on our planet and they come up at different times. It's like God's people come up when you need them, okay? And they you can call them forth from Egypt or Atlanta or at the time of you know, a Lemuria, he can call up like um, Christ time, he can call up Napoleon time, he can call up all these times, okay? All right, so, um, I don't, that just stopped right there. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna read this, okay, because this is um, a validation for, I'm just gonna read it. Um, the Legends of the Grail, have to do a lot with the ship of Solomon. And the ship of Solomon is amazingly, immensely important uh, because it's a time machine. There's a picture of it here. Can you see the picture of the time machine there? Okay, it's like there. See, it's got the Templar cross on it, right? And it's a time machine. And, it, and it apparently was built by King Solomon who married the Queen of Sheba. And so this has to do, this little... Um, thing has to do with the legends of the grail the ship of solomon is immensely important created by the wise king solomon it connected the arthurian age of the grail quest with biblical times solomon's consort the queen of sheba so king solomon's wife was said to have received a vision of events to come foreseeing the coming of the christ the crucifixion and the resurrection she also foresaw that a direct lineal descendant of Solomon is Galahad. And Galahad would seek and achieve the mystery of the grail. So this was already known, all right? To, add, to aid in these future miracles, she asked Solomon, who was renowned as a magician in the Middle Ages, to create a magical craft. This would sail through time and become a means of conveying the three successful Grail Knights on a crucial part of their journey, taking them into the taking them in the end from the earthly world of Arthurian Britain to a paradise paradisical city of Saras, S A R R A S, the same forwards and backwards, which would become a resting place of the Grail until a future age. The reason the gra the Grail was resting in Saras is because she's on the other side of the bale. 
She can't come through until she's discovered. She has to be seen by somebody and they go, I know who you are, right? And hopefully it's like the universe waits until a certain time and then introduces the characters, all right? And they in turn must use both their intelligences to figure out together how to make this work. So I'm just going to go forward again, and then I'm gonna say, I've got one more, one more clue for you. And this is it here, okay. To, to become the master, to become the master of vessels. This card represents the Templar master, who is actually the grail seeker, whose journey we have seen progress to this point. He is celebrating Mass with the Grail itself. He worships the form of the risen, he worships the Master of Vessels. He worships the, the form of the risen Christ. Can you see, can you see he's worshiping and then the figure of Christ shows up, right? Okay, so I, this is what happens. Um, He's celebrating Mass with the Grail her, it's herself. It, he worships the form of the risen Christ who appears in a glow of light above the altar as if from God itself. The master wears a plain white under tunic over which a Templar cloak with a cross in red on the back, the background. The knight has been elected to the rank of master of the order. Here he begins his final journey to become guardian of the grail. We see him celebrating his first mass, but this is no ordinary mass. This is no ordinary celebration. However, because the, cha because the chalice he uses to offer the Eucharist and the wine is the grail itself, and from it emerges, emerges the body of the risen Christ. It's, it, you have to follow the sequence. You have to follow the code to unlock it. And this is what happens when you celebrate with the grail itself. This comes forward from it. It's this energy is produced from it, transforming both participants. All right, so this is very, very exciting. Very exciting. If you follow my work, I must tell you, I've been working really, really hard on this, really trying to crack the code of how to bring Christ back to us. I started 30 years ago. I knew there must be a way to find it. I'm a pioneer, I'm a scientist, I'm a spiritual explorer, all in one, and I've never given up. So sometimes I can be forceful, and, and and it like on it if if I'm passionate if I'm being guided and I know God's telling me to do something I don't back down that's a fearless warrior and it is and I I'm proud to be one because it takes that fierceness that uh I've got to do this 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 is being asked of me think what you want see you later I got to get this job done I understand that I understand what that is because I've had to Oh, find different ways and to sneaking around, you know, I can get this hour and this. Hour. It's been a, to be able to broadcast and be um, presenting this is a challenge in itself. But it's the tenacity to which I am seeing the outcome. I'm seeing this through. I am not a quitter. I'm a team player and I will help boost energy and frequency to love so that truth can be heard. Love transforms frequency. Without it, you can get no higher. I'm going to say it again. You're at the peak of your game. You're at the top of the ladder on your own. You can't get any higher unless you ask for help. You can't get any higher from where you are. If you feel stuck, without incorporating the two is one because it's like a time ceiling. It's like a ceiling we're resisting. And the reason you're resisting 
so much is that we only have so much time to gather so many souls and you don't want to leave one single one behind. Neither do I. One of my heart joys is sometimes I hear the thought and it says, I want to meet everybody. <laughs> I want to meet all the people on the planet. I want to meet everybody and tell them how wonderful they are. Like I have this, you know, why do I want to do that? Why, why would I take, it? it's on my ego, why would I take ownership of it? And then I hear, well, they're your children. So go tell them how proud you are of them because they just passed the test. They just passed the test. Anybody who can hear and see them graduated, rose, ascended. So if you, the gates of heaven are open and you're watching this or you're watching Alex, you're open, you're right at the gates because you're recognizing that there's something in these messages, something in these broadcasts you're not hearing anywhere else. And the male part speaks of what's happening on the ground, boots to the ground, going to be on this, going to keep track of this, right? Good reporter, keeping current, curious, you know, on the job, right? But you, what's happening, and we're saying the mother goddess movement moves in, but how does that look? How does that look? The mother goddess energy moving in. What is that energy that needs to come in to us? It's the feminine. And how does that look? We incorporate and we welcome our feminine half. We incorporate and welcome all that she brings. Here we are. I can't help my body. Wants to do that. Figure eight. You know, bringing me into eternity. Bringing me into eternal time. Bringing my body into balance. Bringing my chakras into balance. Bringing me into the balance of myself as a woman. As expressing beauty as expressing grace, all right? As expressing sexuality, as a woman expressing care and, and love and concern. Love, love is the energy that lifts. Love is the energy that lifts. You're on that ceiling. You won't get any higher unless you bring love on board. And then the love on board brings the God in. And now you get to go beyond the veil to Camelot. You get to go beyond the veil and spend the rest of your time discovering the Holy Grail. It's in discovering God, discovering yourself as a son and daughter of God. So who's going to be the first to do it? It's, it's, it's an involvement in time. And the affirmation that the good side has won is because I'm showing up. Alex Collier is showing up. Okay? We're showing up right now. Whether you're aware of me, I don't know, and it doesn't matter. It matters that you're aware of Alex right now because he's the one giving boots on the ground information. Okay? That vibrational frequency he's affiliated with now, there'll be other people that come in to help, to report on that, to, keep, to, to look after and make sure the school systems are going to be run properly, to make sure we come into community and we talk things over. That energy can be designated. But when the universe is saying, but we need you to love, we need you to bring your love up now, Mother, Father, God, so all can see it, so all can feel it, because we're welcoming everyone into heaven, and we want them to know they're in heaven. They've worked hard to get here, and the gates are open, and they're here. If they're watching you, listening to this, they are, they've made it, all right? So now it's how do we live in heaven? Why do you think it's okay for us to both both be seen for the first time in history on the airwaves at the same time. And the, it, it like, it, it's like, I, I, I don't hold, hold a candle to me. He's got like so many hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds watching him. And I got, I got 20. Like, 
But that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I'm called to do it. I'm doing this because we must be who we are in the moment that we have the knowing of it. And in full obedience, I have the knowing of actually everything that's coming through me right now that I am speaking. I have the knowing of the truth of it. To be able to stand here and speak like this. And then when I hear what's actually coming through me, it, it's accompanied by knowing. In other words, I'm hearing and the message comes with the knowing. That's how I know it's from God. I'm hearing and as, because God comes to us in knowing, it's in the Bible. God comes to us through our knowing, okay? And so when there's a lot of presence of God in you, your knowing is really immediate. You hear, you hear him tell you and you get the knowing of it so you'll act. I'm gonna say that again. So when God speaks, Sometimes you hear it, but you don't act on it. Why not? Because you, you, you lack the knowing of, well, why was I asked to do that? Or why do I have to tur turn left when I'm going right? Oh, I don't want to cancel my plans tonight. I just want to, you know, do this. You're lacking the knowing at that moment, all right? So if you had the knowing that you're supposed to go there, you'd go. Okay, that stopped. That thing. Hold on. You need to take a break. Mm. Okay, to, so to be able to speak in knowings means I'm hearing it and I know it and now I'll tell you, okay? I'm hearing it, I know it. God's putting the knowing right in. So it's a truth right away and I can speak it right away. There's no pausing, there's no thinking it over. It's just say this, say this, this is it, this is it, this is it. So when I'm in perfect alignment and I'm in my power, I stand in my power and I gotta be who I need to be right now, too. Mm -hmm. But I was only hearing how to love you more, and it was about staying with the water, and just let him be alone on an island, or you know, with just one other person, get to know them, and just be together so we can get to know each other. You know, that's. I think that's going to be a real sacred time, but I think it'll all, it'll be offered. It'll be offered to go, gee, I actually don't want to go to this place in Hawaii. Do you want, you want to stay? And then you, oh, okay, yeah. Like everything calls, falls into alignment like that. So we don't have to really worry or make a decision. But I think it's important when you get the vision to share it, not trying to say, this is the way it's going to be, but rather, hey, I heard this. What'd you hear? Hey, I heard this. Would you? So it's like it's like that 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 flow without judgment, without condemnation, without worry. Oh, maybe they're trying to get something out of me, or maybe I'm you know like that low thought that still comes in that takes away from the path of the joy. Just be aware when it comes and say maybe this isn't the real deal. Maybe this is maybe you know. Because the longer you let that argument go on, is the longer, it's like the devil's got you and you can't move forward to where you got to go. So it's hearing the negative and go, yeah, I hear you negative, but you know what? Love says this. Love says do this. Love is telling me to do this, but I'm not listening. Why? Well, what if I make a fool of myself? Well, what if I do something stupid? Or what if I get hurt? You know, it's like, <clears throat> you, you must trust. You must trust what you feel. And, um, hmm. Trust everything you feel. Hmm. So, hmm. Okay, so I'm going to probably end up here now because I've been talking for a while. Um, what's the main thing? Historic day in the spiritual realms. This is the day the kingdom gates were opened. This is the day, yeah, I would say this is the day the gates of heaven opened. This is the day. This is the day. I should, 
I should make sure I tell you the correct date, shouldn't I, right? It was either February 4th, I think. Oh, let's see, I know the 7th, yeah, it's the 4th, February 4th. Yeah, so that's 0, 2, 4, 6 and 6 are 12, 3, the Trinity, that's pretty nice. Okay, all right, so we're summing up, we're, we're, we're coming to a conclusion about this and we're saying, um, Love. Love is what lifts. And we'll probably have another video soon about love because next weekend's Valentine's Day. But um, being courageous to speak what you hear and come forward to speak it because you're being asked by God is being a warrior and a servant, a good servant. Regardless of what anyone thinks or the outcome, I'm doing what I'm guided to do and the rest I can't worry about. So if I'm guarded to do this, right, be that connection, right? You wanna, you wanna, it's the awakened state of that's my job. <laughs> that's what I'm here to do. This is what I'm responsible for. Not everybody else has the same um, ask. But, you know, God's not asking them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love my son. That's what I always hear. So I think magic is happening. Like real magic. Really great magic. Yeah. It's a big day today. So I'm going to say goodbye. And I'm actually going to leave then and go and listen to the rest of Alex's uh, seminar. Because he's got so much great information that <clears throat> I can listen to it. I don't know how many times. And I'm still learning every time he... Oh, what a diligent man. What a what a trooper. Guy never gives up. He's he's just like, I'm going to wake these guys up if it takes me 30 years and longer. And God love him. What a stubborn old guy. Coot because, you know, he's doing it. He is just he and he hasn't stopped. So, I think God's saying he deserves a little time out, a little reward. And we'll see what, if, how that looks. We'll see what happens with that. Okay, so as we let the mystery unfold and patience reign, and it always does give in to, yes, it has to be the right time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> hmm, anything else? This is all very exciting stuff that's happening. And even if it's just happening in my world, it's like, that's good enough for me. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take the adventure. I'll take the adventure because what have you got to lose, right? Oh my God, what have you got to lose? And I just think there's going to be such a great adventure. I don't want to miss it. I just don't want to miss it because uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, more on love. Probably another video coming up. Okay. Um, thank you. Historic day. Going to go celebrate.